Alright, so now we will talk about the effects of a certain substituent in the benzene ring. So let's draw a benzene ring here. Alright, uh, and uh, let's try to draw a certain. Let's, let's just put any substituent R. So this R substituent will actually have two uh, main influences on the next substituents. For example, you want to add uh, a certain substituent X. The R will dictate two factors that will uh, influence X. First is the uh, activity of the ring. And second is direction. Of If you have a substituent X, then the direction of X. Because in an aromatic ring, if we have a cert if if we have two substituents we we have a uh, isomers for that so uh, let's draw let's draw these first if it is in 1 2 this is carbon 1 and this is 2 and you put the x here this is called as ortho if you put the x at 3 this is meta if you put the x at 4, or exactly opposite to the r, this is para. So again, this is 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4. Alright? So the direction I'm talking about is whether the x will go ortho, will go meta, or will go para. So let's go first to the change number 1, which is activation or deactivation. We know for a fact now that an aromatic ring reacts because it has a lot of electrons in the ring. And the more electrons in the ring, what happens? The more reactive it becomes with electrophiles. And vice versa, if you have less electron in the electrons in the ring, you have less reactivity. It does not mean actual electrons, like if this uh, six electrons become seven or become eight. Uh, no, not that, because in the first place, you're going to violate the Huckel's rule. It just means electron density or a certain set of structural effects. So now we will go back to structural effects. So let's uh, have an example, all right, of what I'm talking about when we talk about activators and deactivators. For example, we have a methyl group attached to the ring. We know that carbon is electron repelling, right? It's it's not really a fan of electrons. It doesn't like electrons that much. Then what happens? It could actually increase the electron density inside. So what happens? Will this be activated or deactivated? Well, since it increases the electron density in the ring, it increases the reactivity it increases the activity. So th we say that this methyl group is an activator. Alright. Let's have another example. COOH. The problem in this is we have partial negative charges here. This one would be partially positive. What would carbon do in order to satisfy its partial positiveness? Since this is positive, it likes elec electrons, right? If it likes electrons, where can the electrons come from? Look at the ring. There's a lot of electrons there. So what happens is that this carbon would actually pull out the electrons. What happens? It reduces the activity of the ring. So here in this case, the COOH, this carboxyl group, is actually a deactivator. Let's have uh, two more examples just to get uh, the point across. How about OH? O is electronegative, yes. It could pull the electrons because ele it's electron withdrawing. But look, oxygen has a lone pair. So in this case, the lone pair, uh, the, the lone pair of this would actually overpower the oxygen's ability to pull out electrons. So it's like if it pulls out a little electrons, in exchange, it puts a lot of lone pair, uh, a lot of electron density by virtue of this lone pair. So it really increases the activity of the ring. That's why OH is a strong activator. All right. How about NO? 
actually NO is drawn like this remember nitrogen is trivalent it, but here it has four bonds so it is tetravalent in here it would have a positive charge a, a whole positive charge and nitrogen is like oh my god I cannot have a positive charge I'm, I'm freaking out I need to get a lot of electrons so what happens it pulls out so much electron density so it decreases the activity of the ring so much it, so meaning actually in the nitro group is the strongest deactivator so again this and this is a deactivator this OH or this hydroxyl group is an activator so I hope you get the point alright so that's it for activation or deactivation um, in the handout I put there the relative strengths of activation or deactivation I think it's in a uh, a diagram format so it's like from left to right leftmost is most deactivating rightmost is most activating so you just use this, that as reference and actually you could uh, if you've mastered the structure effects you would understand why those are ordered in that manner alright now let's talk about the second factor which is the direction this is quite uh, complex because we're going to draw canonical structures but let's try to make it simple let's just let's use a simple activator such as OH what happens alright what happens if we have OH so again I said it would have a lone pair it would go to the ring what would happen so this is the first direction and then what happens is that this bond will isolate in this carbon so what happens two electrons we will have a full negative charge here All right. and uh, we retain this OH then what happens is at, wa uh, at a certain point this charge jumps to the other side all right and uh, it actually goes to this and the double bonds will rearrange in this manner the OH is still here and at another point it will jump okay the way they are jumping is as if they're all conjugated no it it doesn't jump uh, just one carbon upward it jumps two carbons in distance so if this will jump another distance it would go one two it would go here so it would go at that uh, at this carbon and then the double bonds will rearrange again look at this all right here the position of the negative uh, charge is meta right because one two how about here one this is four this is para and this one this is also one two meta meaning you selectively if you have an activator yes we have OH as an activator you increase the activity at uh, I, I'm sorry this is ortho I'm very sorry this is ortho alright I stand corrected activity at ortho and para directions so why why increased activity because the electron density at ortho and para is m very much larger and the uh, meta meta is untouched or unaffected so if an electrophile would attack then most likely where would it go would it go to the meta wherein there's not much electrons or would it go at ortho or para where there is a lot of activity then of course the electrophile will go either ortho or para that's why activators are usually ortho para directors now we could actually just get that concept and reverse all of that but just to confirm that let's draw again let's just draw a strong deactivator such as NO2 NO2 so the reverse happens actually it goes outside right so what happens if in the previous uh, diagram the the carbon directly beside the the one holding the functional group becomes more negative it becomes the opposite because imagine you're going to remove this because you're going to donate this to the nitrogen 
so what happens the nitrogen may be fine alright uh, nitrogen here is positive here it becomes neutral but the electrons are gone so it becomes positive at the ortho portion and uh, I think we already know the pattern it will just the positive char charge will just jump to the para okay and then at a certain point it will jump again to the opposite uh, ortho position so let's compare uh, I'll get back the or first paper so here there is decreased activity this time at ortho and para meta is still unaffected no Meta is unaffected. Good for your meta. Now, would an electrophile attack these positive sites? Remember, electrophiles like electrons. And if it would go to a site that is also positive, it would not like it. So where would it go instead? Instead of going ortho or para, this time it would go meta. Alright? So this just means, this just means that most of the deactivators are meta directors except take note except for halogens why because if you replace this with a halogen if you have a halogen here of course it would uh, pull electrons away it's electronegative eh? so it would be deactivating but uh, for a diagram that I won't anymore draw let's just uh, remember that halogens are actually orthopara directors. So that's it. So uh, probably I won't give an example anymore, probably just in the lecture. But there are examples in the handout, so I hope it would clarify uh, more what I have just explained. So that ends the discussion on aromatic hydrocarbons.